Part 2.1 Stages of Spiritual Journey by Alama Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai A materialist passes his life in the dark valley of materialism. He is plunged in the sea of evil desires and always is tossed from this side to that side by the waves of material relations of wealth, wife, and children. He cries for help, but in vain and, and in the end gets nothing but disappointment. Sometimes in the sea a breath of enlivening breeze, divine impulse, pats him and kindles in him a hope that he may reach the shore safely. But this breeze does not blow regularly. It is only occasional. In your life you get some pleasant breaths from your Lord. Make a point of being benefited by them and do not turn away from them. Under the divine impulse and novice decides to somehow or other pass the world of plurality. This journey is called by the Gnostic Seir Wasuluk spiritual journey. Suluk means to traverse the path and Seir means to view the characteristics and prominent features of the stages and stations on the way. Riyazat and acts of self-mortification are the provisions required for the spiritual journey. As it is not easy to renounce the material relations, the novice slowly breaks the snares of the world of plurality and cautiously begins his journey from the material world. Before long, he enters another world called Barzakh. This is the world of his evil desires and inner thoughts. Here, he finds that material relations accumulated a lot of impurities in his heart. These impurities, which are an offshoot of his material relations, are a product of his voluptuous thoughts and sensual desires. These thoughts obstruct the novice in the pursuit of his spiritual journey with a result that he loses peace of mind. He wants to enjoy the recollection of Allah for some time. But these thoughts suddenly interrupt him and foil his efforts. Somebody has well said that man is always engrossed in his petty thoughts and haunted by the ideas of gain and loss. As a result, he not only loses his composure and peace of mind, but can also not pay attention to his spiritual journey to a higher world. It is obvious that mental unrest is more harmful than any physical loss or pain. Man can avoid the clash of external relations and interests. But it is difficult for him to get rid of his own ideas and thoughts, because they are always with him. Anyhow, the true seeker of Allah and traveler in his way is not distressed and discouraged by these obstacles and continues to boldly proceed to his destination with the help of his divine impulse. Till he safely gets out of the world of petty and conflicting ideas called Barzakh. He has to be very vigilant and watchful lest any vicious thought may remain lurking in some hidden corner of his mind. When these vicious thoughts are turned out, they usually hide in some hidden corner of the mind. The poor spiritual traveler wrongly thinks that he has got rid of their mischief. But when he has found the way to the fountain of life and wants to drink from it, they suddenly appear to ruin him. The spiritual traveler may be compared to a person who has built a water tank in his house, but has not used long. In the meantime, the impurities and pollution have settled down in the bottom of the tank, 
although water appears to be clear from above, he thinks that water is clean. But when he gets down into the tank or washes something in it, black patches appear on the surface and he finds that water is dirty. For this reason, it is necessary for the Salik spiritual traveler to concentrate his thoughts with the help of Riyazat and acts of self-mortification, so that his attention may not be diverted from Allah. At last, when after passing through the Barzakh, the spiritual traveler enters the spiritual world, he still has to traverse several more stages, the details of which we will describe later. In short, the spiritual traveler watching his own lower self and divine names and attributes gradually advances till ultimately he reaches the stage of total fana, self-annihilation, that is, passing away from his own perishable will, and then the station of baqa, abiding in the everlasting will of Allah. It is at this stage that the secret of eternal life is revealed to him. We can infer this doctrine from the Holy Quran also if we ponder over certain verses of it. Think not of those who are slain in the way of Allah as dead. Nay, they are living. With their Lord they have provisions. Surah Ali Imran Verse 169 Everything will perish, save his countenance. Chapter 28 Verse 88 That which you have wasted away, and that which is with Allah remains. Surah al nahl Verse 96 These verses put together show that the countenance of Allah or those who are living and who have provisions with their Lord. According to the text of Quran, they never perish. Certain other verses indicate that the countenance of Allah signifies divine names which are imperishable. In one of its verses, the Quran itself has interpreted the countenance as the divine names and characterizes the countenance of Allah as of glory and honor. Everyone who is living will pass away, and there will remain the countenance of your Lord of glory and honor. Surat Rahman, verse 27 All the commentators of the Quran agree that in this verse the phrase of glory and honor qualifies the countenance, and it means the countenance of glory and honor. As we know, the countenance of everything is that which manifests it. The manifestations of Allah are his names and attributes. It is through them that the creation looks at Allah, or, in other words, knows him. With this explanation, we come to the conclusion that every existing thing perishes and wastes away, except the glorious and beautiful names of Allah. This also shows that the Gnostics to whom the worst, nay, they are living and have their provisions with their Lord, applies are the manifestations of the glorious and beautiful names of Allah. From the above, it is also clear what the holy Imams meant when they said, We are the names of Allah. Obviously, to be the head of a government or to be the highest religious and legal authority is not a position which could be described by these words. What actually these words denote is the state of passing away in Allah, abiding permanently with his countenance and being 
a manifestation of his glories and beautiful limbs and attributes.